Now then, let's have a look at section 2.19, continuing with the Affinity for Designer workbook, um, the iPad version. Well, I'm working through it with the iPad because it's a little different than the desktop, obviously. Now we're on page, page 108. Minuscule numbers on the bottom of these pages. Very difficult to see. And where we left off before, we've got the outer circle and you can see that there there's the outer circle there's the inner the inner um, circle if you like um, and it's that color in the center that's what we're looking at now by touching that of course I've gone and put a okay with the circle selected from the tools panel select the fill tool and that's, oh, that's because I've got that there. Sorry, my bad. There's the inner circle selected. There's the fill tool. You can see that over there. The fill tool is the little can with a line through it. That one there. But that's selected. It's very sensitive. Let's go back to there. Everything's set up. Now, I've got the inner circle selected. I've got the color right. Let's select the fill tool. Now, the fill tool is selected. On the context toolbar, set the type to linear. Type linear. That's the context toolbar down here, remember? And the type is linear. Now, you can see it's brought up that crossbar there in the center. And it's also, if you look at the left of that, it's slightly faded there towards darker on the right-hand side. So you drag across the artboard and you can set a custom path. You can drag across the artboard. You can see it's changed the path. If we do that. We change the path. Now it's going from top to bottom. Let's back up on that. And we're back in the center. If you just use that little bar in the center, you can change that. Not too sure what's happening there. Change the opacity. And you can see the opacity's changed quite a bit there. Let's drag the little slider across. You can see the difference in the slider there. Let's drag it back again. And I created a I created a point in the middle. Position that cursor along the path and it will change to A plus sign which we've got there and you can click to add a new point so you can actually change the gradient within the gradient and you can change the direction you can also um, tap outside the circle with the circle selected and the fill tool active Click any stop on the gradient to select it. There's a stop there. We've selected that one. Then on the color or swatches panel, apply a color to the selected stop. There's a color panel. And there we go. In that, from the stop on the right to the stop on that circle stop, we've got a color. And it's changed it. See, there's a stop there, and there's a stop there. Put that stop in there, put the purple on, and you've added that from one stop to the next. You can see where I had it before was from the far right-hand stop to the first stop, but we only want that little purple bar. And that's how you can add different colors across that panel. Now you can change that by being outside as well, outside the circle.
there's your colors there there's and you can see just above it there's the color coming in there so you can you can be quite flexible with that you can move that around almost anywhere you want by dragging that out you're increasing the size so you're not limited to the confines of the circle to get rid of that that bar down there you just tap the move control and you're back in the circle and that's gradient control i suggest experimenting with that they do mention in the book that there's another control and you'll see it if you're using the desktop version the alternative or additional working with gradients um, control but it's not available in the um, in, it's not available in the iPad version perhaps there's no room for it okay that's the finish of 2.19